everyone and welcome back. Today we're tackling a question we've seen pop up a lot. Can Amazon tiger shrimp and Siamese algae eaters, you know, those SAEs, actually live together peacefully in a tank? Or is it just a recipe for a shrimp eat shrimp situation? We dug up this article that's all about this very pairing, so let's dive in. Well, the good news is you absolutely can keep them together. Yeah. In fact, they can actually be like a really good team if you set things up right. Teamwork in a fish tank. Okay, you've got my attention. Tell me more about this dream team. So your Amazon tiger shrimp, obviously, right from the name, they love algae. They're like these little munching machines constantly mm -hmm. cleaning those green patches. But here's the thing. They can be a little messy themselves. And that's where those SAEs, those Siamese algae eaters, they really shine. Ah, so they're like the cleanup crew after the shrimp buffet. Exactly. Leftovers, debris, uneaten food, you name it. The SAEs are on it, like the garbage disposals of the aquarium, making sure nothing goes to waste. Plus, they'll even nibble on some algae themselves, so it's really a win-win. Okay, so they've got the eating habits down, but what about their personalities? Are we talking peaceful coexistence or, like, underwater MMA? Both of these species are known for being, thankfully, pretty peaceful. They're not really interested in picking fights, which is, let's be honest, crucial in a community tank. And here's another bonus. They like basically the same water. So no need for some elaborate tank setup with like one side mimicking the Amazon and the, well, whatever an SAE's natural habitat looks like, I guess. Yeah, exactly. They both thrive in warm, slightly acidic water. But, and, and this is a big, but there are definitely some things you've got to consider to make sure everyone's happy. And importantly, uneaten. Uneaten. Okay, now you've really got my attention. What kind of danger are we talking about? I thought SAE's were all algae and shill, not shrimp on the barbie. See, that's what's interesting. Most people see algae eater and think, you know, strictly vegetarian. But in the wild, they totally have a little bit of a predatory instinct. Wait, really? Yeah, they're what you'd call opportunistic eaters. So if something small enough happens to be swimming by... It's game on. Oh, no, my poor shrimp. <laughs> something a lot of people don't realize. They think algae eater, totally harmless. But yeah, in the wild, they'll definitely go for a smaller fish, even an invertebrate, if they get the chance. That's why tank size is like absolutely crucial when you've got these two together. Okay, so how much space are we talking? I mean, bigger is always better with tanks, yeah. right? Absolutely. This article we're looking at, they recommend at least 10 gallons of water per shrimp. And remember, Amazon tiger shrimp, they can get kind of big, yeah. up to three inches. Three inches. Wow. Okay, that's not a tiny shrimp. Right. And the SAEs get even bigger, up to six inches. Six inches. Okay, so we're not talking a shrimp shack anymore. This is like a shrimp mansion we're setting up. But that extra space, I'm guessing that helps cut down on those accidental snacking incidents. Exactly. It gives everyone their own space, yeah. you know, room to roam, their own little territories. And most importantly, a chance to escape if they need to. So even with a bigger tank, sounds like providing some good hiding spots is key. Are we talking like elaborate castles, miniature shipwrecks? What are we building in here? Get creative. Think about their natural environments caves, lots of plants, some good driftwood, anything that breaks up those lines of sight, you know, gives them a sense of security. So next time I see a shrimp chilling under a ceramic log, I'll know it's not just admiring the craftsmanship, it's strategically avoiding being lunch. Exactly. And that brings us to, I'd say, another super important part of keeping these two together successfully, the food situation. Because a well-fed fish is less likely to try and eat its tank mate, right? Exactly. Even That's if you've got a giant tank, mm -hmm. if those shrimp and SAEs are constantly fighting over the same food, things are going to get tense. So variety is key. Got it. So what's on the menu for these discerning diners? Well, first off, you'll definitely want those LG wafers handy. I mean, like, that's like their staple food group, both the shrimp and the SAEs. But to really keep things interesting, try offering some blanched veggies. Really? Like what? They're eating salads in there. Pretty much. Zucchini, spinach, things like that. They love them. It's great for fiber, vitamins, all that good stuff. And then every once in a while, you know, for a little treat, try some live or frozen food. Brine shrimp, blood worms. So it's not just about keeping their little palates entertained. There's a practical side to all this variety, too. Huh? 100%. See, by giving them both food they like, but different kinds, you're really cutting down on that competition. Yeah. Less chance of anyone going hungry, less chance of anyone getting you know, territorial. It's all about balance. Mm -hmm. A well-fed tank is a happy tank. Love it. Speaking of happy tanks, though, even with the best planning, sometimes things can still go sideways, right? We're dealing with living creatures here. They've got minds of their own. What about those worst-case scenarios? What should we be on the lookout for? 
you're right, you can't plan for everything. Uh. But being aware of those potential issues, that's half the battle. So first and foremost, any sign of aggression, that's a red flag. Finipping, chasing, if one of your shrimp is always backed into a corner, that kind of thing. Gotcha. So like any bullying behavior, basically. And I'm guessing a shrimp that's holed up in a cave 24-7, that's not always a good sign either, right? Right. I mean, they like their hiding spots, but you want to see them out and about too, right? Yeah. Foraging, doing their shrimp mm -hmm. thing. If they're hiding all the time, it could mean they're stressed, maybe being harassed. Okay. So how else can we tell if something's off? Any of those like subtle signs that something's up in tank paradise? Keep an eye on their appetite. If they suddenly stop eating, especially the shrimp, that's often the first sign that something's wrong. And their swimming patterns, too. Are they swimming all weird, looking sluggish? So basically, any unusual behavior, anything out of the ordinary, could be a sign to investigate a little further. What about water quality? That's got to be huge. Huge. Even if you've got a good filter, those toxins, they can build up over time. So regular water changes, that's key for everyone's health and happiness. Okay, so how often are we talking and how much water are we changing out each time? Give us the details. A good rule of thumb is about 25, 30% of the water every week or two. Yeah. And use a gravel vacuum, you know, to siphon out the water, suck up any of that debris that's settled at the bottom. And I'm guessing we're not just filling it up straight from the tap, right? Definitely not. That tap water's got chlorine, sometimes other chemicals that can really mess with your fish, your invertebrates, all that. Yeah. You got to treat that water first with a dechlorinator. You can grab those at any pet store. So it's all about being proactive, paying attention, right? Like being an aquarium detective. Yeah. Speaking of detective work, any tools of the trade that can make this whole process a little easier help us keep those parameters in check? Oh, absolutely. A good test kit, that's essential. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to actually test those water parameters, not just eyeball it. We're talking pH, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate levels, all that good stuff. Okay, so what are we aiming for with those numbers? So you want that pH slightly acidic to neutral, somewhere between 6.5 and 7.5 is ideal. Ammonia and nitrate, those should always be at zero. And nitrates ideally below 20 parts per million. Okay, good numbers to keep in mind. Anything else to add to our aquarium detective kit? A thermometer. Got to make sure that water temperature stays in the sweet spot for both your shrimp and your SAEs. Can't forget about that. Speaking of, what is that sweet spot? You mentioned they like it warm, but how warm are we talking? Shoe for between 72 and 78 degrees Fahrenheit. They can handle a little fluctuation, but consistency is key. Got it. Consistent, good quality water, a watchful eye, and a few basic tools. Sounds like a recipe for success. But with all this talk about creating the perfect environment, you know, it gets you thinking. We're right. really putting a lot of effort into mimicking their natural habitat, but how natural is it, really? You know, that's a really interesting question, and honestly, it's something I think about a lot. We spend all this time building these beautiful tanks, trying to create these little ecosystems, but at the end of the day, we're the ones calling the shots, aren't we? Exactly. We're giving them safety, stability, all that good stuff, but they don't really get a say in the matter, do they? It's kind of like we're playing Mother Nature in a way, right? It's true. And I think every, like, you know, responsible aquarist, they mm. think about this stuff. We want these beautiful tanks, these thriving ecosystems. But there's always that question, right? Like, how much we're we impacting these guys, even if we're doing what's best for them? Yeah, exactly. It's like they're safe, they're fed, the water's clean. We're even thinking about hiding spots, like we were saying, but they don't get a choice in any of it, do they? It's a balance, for sure. I mean, we're giving them things that are getting harder to come by in the wild, right? Food clean water, those hiding spots we were just talking about. But we're also making decisions for them about their freedom, their natural behaviors. Yeah. Even the danger, you know, that's part of life in the wild. Danger is an interesting way to put it. Like, yeah, I don't want anything bad to happen to my shrimp, but in the wild, that's always a possibility, right? Totally. It's just, you know, the natural order of things. And us as aquarists, we're kind of taking that away, for better or worse. Wow. Food for thought. Right. It really makes you realize keeping a tank, it's not just, oh, buy some fish, throw them in there, huh? Not at all. It's a learning curve, for sure. It's about always educating yourself, being aware of the impact we have on these animals. That's a big responsibility. Well said. So to all our listeners out there thinking about starting their own little Amazon tiger shrimp and Siamese algae eater community, go for it. But definitely go into it with your eyes open. Exactly. Have fun with it. Enjoy the process. But remember, a thriving tank, that's a sign of a good aquarist, someone who cares. And that's a wrap on another deep dive. Hopefully you guys learned something new today about Amazon tiger shrimp and Siamese algae eaters. Until next time, happy fish keeping, everyone.